Hey, hey, it's your boy, baby Flapula. Ross, Vital, Yablani, Ingrushi, Poplali, Tumani, Nadrekui. We had the land of America, Tusha, Navisoki, Berek, Nadrut, Boy. Sorry about that. Um, today I actually wanted to share a joke with you from my favorite comedian, Norm MacDonald. And I think it's a very interesting, a very beautiful joke with regards to its logical structure and as such it can serve as an entry point to some very interesting discussions in logics. So without further ado, let's look at the joke. Well, I guess the biggest thing that nobody knows about me is I'm a deeply closeted gay man. What? <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, that's... You're a gay man? I'm not gay. I said I'm deeply closeted. <laughs> well, well, I'm wait. as straight as an arrow. <laughs> uh, so you're a gay man who won't admit it? No, no. Do you know what deeply closeted means? Yeah. It means a man who will not acknowledge that he's gay. Yes. So I'm telling you, I'm not gay. <laughs> So what Norm basically says here is that he is gay, but he doesn't believe that he's gay. Okay, so how I came to this is basically he said that he doesn't acknowledge that he's gay and I took that to mean that he's in denial of being gay, therefore he doesn't believe that he's gay. Now I realize that that's not the only way how to interpret that statement, but uh, let's just go with it, I guess. He is gay but he doesn't believe that he's gay. Which might seem like a very absurd statement to make. And well, thinking about this sentence led me to a quite um, interesting paradox in logics called Moore's Paradox uh, after the logician and philosopher G. E. Moore, uh, who you might know after that um, famous, arguably hilarious uh, proof of the existence of the external world. Um, I don't really necessarily see the significance of this paradox, why it should be so special, um, but I nonetheless think that it's a very neat entry point to some very interesting discussions in logics so we will use it and make have those discussions now now the first thing we can note is that this paradox only appears when i assert it in the first person and present tense for example if i make it about someone else like norm is gay but he doesn't believe it that's a completely fine statement to make and also if I make the statement, like if I put the statement into the past tense, I am gay, but I didn't believe it. And also if I make it about the future tense, like I'm gay, but I won't believe it. Although this one is a bit of a stretch because we'd like to imagine our future selves to be better informed than we are. But obviously there are examples that go against it. For example, um, you know, things to do with memory loss. We can also get rid of this paradox if we embed the statement in a truth conditional. For example, we can say, if thinking about norm in a sexual way makes you gay, then yes, I'm gay, but I don't believe it. Now, since this paradox only arises in the first person, present sense, and it has to do with mainly with belief, we kind of want to pin down where exactly this absurdity, this um, apparent contradiction at least, um, comes from. And we can do this by logically analyzing a sentence, but standard, standard logic won't help us here. We will need to make use of a special logic called doxastic logic, as in the old Greek word doxa, which used to mean belief or opinion or popular belief. And, uh, for example, paradox in this old Greek sense just used to mean a conclusion that goes contrary to popular belief or opinion. Now, furthermore, we will get back to logics in a second, but furthermore, we can note that this sentence, I'm gay, but I don't believe that I'm gay, can be interpreted in a great variety of ways. Figuring out how to understand this claim and how to interpret it 
we will have to make use of a branch of linguistics called pragmatics, which deals with language in use and contexts of utterance. What's to note here is the point that people don't always believe what they say. They could be lying. For example, I can say that my IQ is 300 to impress you guys, but that doesn't mean that I will believe it. And in that sense, saying my IQ is 300, but I don't believe it is a perfectly consistent thing to say. So what we're looking, of course, is a context in which we are expected to say this statement truthfully. Surely that's the situation that's truly absurd. But again, there's more ways of understanding this sentence on itself, even in the same situation. Like I can make it apparent with my intonation right now, but if I say, for example, yeah, I'm gay, but I don't believe I'm gay right, then the sentence is not really that absurd. I, I'm simply saying something in the sense of when somebody asks you if you like sports and you say yes and no, we don't take that to be a contradiction. We simply take it to be a condensed way of saying that the answer is more complex than the binary question assumes. Here we have a sort of uh, equivocation between gay and gay but that only arises in the natural language, um, the language we use every day because language adapts to the users and you know basically what people need and with that words acquire different meanings and then you end up with words that have like two, three, seven different meanings. But once you transcribe this natural language into an ideal language, into the language of logics, then you have to follow something that's called the principle of identity. For example, in the natural language, the word gay can refer to different ideas, even if I mean it kind of in the same sense. For example, I'm gay, but I don't, I don't believe that I'm gay. We still see that those two words refer to a bit different ideas. But if in logics we choose a sign, for example, G, then we have to agree what exactly it means and it has to preserve that one and only meaning or else there's no point in doing logics. Um, this is what Aristotle called the principle of identity and um, basically without it there's no point in doing logics then we end up with um, uh, there's a meme like it says it goes like cheese has holes so more cheese is more holes more holes means less cheese so more cheese is less cheese you know here we see a, an example of um, the principle of identity being broken um, the same words are being used to denote different ideas uh, so we can't do that in logic so here we have uh, g so basically we won't want to have only one sign denoting this idea of a person being gay and we will decide that is G and with that we have no equivocation that is two words uh, sounding the same but referring to different ideas we can have that in everyday language but not in logics so we would write um, that statement down as um, uh, the person or I I'm gay I have the property of being gay let's say I mean that's just convention how we will write it down that's just how I will write it down for the purpose of this video but of course um, anything goes just as long as you are consistent about it uh, so I'm gay and I don't believe that I'm gay now it's not really apparent whether I mean um, that with this statement or whether I mean that I'm gay and uh, where is it there and I believe that I'm not gay. Now, you see, there's, there are two different ways in which we can understand such um, those absurd sentences that we're dealing with. And, and this is a subtle distinction that's um, to be found in, for example, that joke about Descartes being in a pub and then a, um, the, the pub person, what? Uh, the bartender. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> the bartender. <laughs> The bartender is like, hey, the car, take René, do you want another beer? And um, then the cart is like, I think not. And then he disappears. Right? Like, 
should I explain? Um, right, Descartes is the guy that whose biggest contribution to philosophy is the idea of cogito ergo sum, like um, I think, therefore I exist. Like he was trying to find absolute certainty, and then he like figured out, whoa, if I'm thinking, then surely I must exist, or else. To who would those ideas belong? They belong to me, I think, therefore I am. But he put it in a very problematic uh, way. Like, I think, therefore I am. That would imply that thinking is a necessary condition of being. Without thinking, there's no being. So if you would stop thinking for whatever reason, then you would stop being. And then when Descartes is in the pub and he says, I think not, which means like, I don't, I think that I don't want a beer, right? Uh, if this is like, thinking uh, about a beer uh, I think that I don't want a beer right that is what he was saying but the interpretation was like I don't think that's the wrong interpretation that's the joke I guess um, then he ceases to be yeah that's basically the joke so let's take a look at doxastic logics no First of all, we have to decide what kind of reasoner we are looking for like is it an ideal reasoner a so-called accurate reasoner because in that sense we have to accept the um, well the axiom or the um, rule that for every claim this is the sign for denoting every that's the sign denoting every element so for every um, p for every fact um, there is the case that if somebody believes p then p is the case but we could also you know talk about a inaccurate reasoner which is usually the case with people like that's at least uh, one and this is the the sign for existence like at least one p exists for which it is the case that p is not true uh, but somebody believes or a person believes wait what did i write here P is not the case, but our inaccurate reasoner believes that it is. And that's usually the case with people. And there's so many beliefs to be had and you can't really... We are not logical machines. Everybody has at least 100 <laughs> inconsistent beliefs. But that's okay as long as we strive to make them consistent and justified, I guess. So now let's check what's up with this sentence, where exactly the absurdity, the intuitive, the intuition come from that's telling us that something is wrong with this sentence. Now let's take it in its, um, well, that's called its um, omissive form, and um, then we have its commissive form, which is, which is this. Oh, fuck. So this, of course, as said, is just, convention agreement so it can be um, expressed in many different ways you can go you know with different notations in logics so um, we could use like this one it's asserted that p is the case and that uh, well i don't believe that p is the case now this is the Murian sentence, right? The Murian paradox. And uh, then we have a principle in um, this toxastic logic that goes like, if I assert P, then surely it should follow that P is the case and I believe that well, P is the case. This is called the Murian principle. Well, and if we just combine the two, we should get that well you see right you see this right um we have to insert this function into this function so that we get right um it is asserted that this so first of all if something is asserted then then this is the case and then this is the case we basically inserted this function into this p over here. So first of all, we got this, and then we like added this part of the principle, which means that basically it's believed that p is the case. But again, we have to 
change it with this and basically we get we get this now what we can see here is that we get a contradiction and a direct contradiction uh, basically I don't believe that I'm gay but I also believe that I'm gay in this in this scenario so here we have a direct contradiction but now let's look at a different um, formulation of this uh, paradox the so-called commissive form so it can be expressed as um, it's asserted that P is the case and uh, I believe that P is not the case right this is again more and permissive form good like this and then uh, again there's this principle right which has to be uh, I don't there's no, no use in writing it again I guess and um, well let's let's again let's now let's uh, put this function into oh I forgot a parenthesis let's put this function into this principle and we get that um, P is the case and I believe that P is not the case and I um, so I get P is the case and I believe that P is not the case and wait where is the end sign okay and I believe that E is the case and I believe that I believe <laughs> right I believe that <clears throat> I believe that I believe let me just check yeah that P is not the case wait something some, something what oh shit yeah 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 I don't uh, I believe that, yeah that's right I'm sorry I'm a bit rusty with this yeah um yeah, and here we have, well, here we spotted a contradiction, right? But here we have no direct contradiction, really. What we do have is an inconsistency. Because this person believes that P is the case and P is not the case. So, which is, which is, you know, that's fine. There's always some degree of inconsistency in every web of beliefs. At least as far as it comes to humans. So we just logically analyzed the sentence and we saw why why it seemed so absurd to us. And we also saw that there's more ways in how to understand it. And that there's only one specific context and one specific interpretation that allows for uh, two different interpretations. And then one of them is contradictory and the other one is con inconsistent inconsistent that's the way in which we wanted to interpret that sentence in the first place whatsoever but still it's not the only way and um, when we engage in debates it's usually um, good to note that it's good to just have a basic knowledge and how diverse of how diverse the set of possible interpretations is for every statement that we make really and so we don't just jump to conclusions maybe and uh, also so that we learn to be a bit more charitable with our with the people we speak to so for example if in this um if in this situation when somebody would be like oh norm norm this is a legal contradiction don't you see i mean that would be a bit that would be a bit pedantic maybe um, but yeah that was that was moore's paradox and doxastic logics and i don't know I don't really know whether I am gay I don't really believe that I am gay And I feel to know Because
because it seems to have a different negative connotation. Oh. Shitty music.